Well, hello everybody and welcome to our Mass for this, the fifth Sunday of Easter. Now, before we begin, I just want to make one or two suggestions so that we can prepare well. Let you know what the hymn today is going to be, this joyful Easter tide. It's quite a challenging hymn, um, challenging for me and Brother James and you at home, but I thought we needed a bit of a challenge today. Um, so we need to start it low enough, uh, and then it bounces along. And uh, for those of you who are going to join in, um, I did notice that the word Trump comes in. Uh, this is nothing to do with the President of the United States, okay? This is uh, speaking of trumpets ringing out the message across the world. So that's in verse 2. Um, I also want to extend a special welcome because I think there may be... Um, some of the First Communion children who perhaps haven't been with us up to now, I hope um, that all of them are going to be with us over these next few weeks and indeed supported by the children in our schools because this week not only did my Thursday message, and just for those of you who aren't aware of that, every Thursday afternoon now I'm sending out a message um, just to prepare for the weekend, um, having a little reflection about things. And this year our head teachers, uh, Mrs Debbie Bostock, uh, Mr Matt White and Mrs Sandy Coleman, at uh, Carlton House. They all um, said that they would be happy for the message to go out through the school website. So hopefully it has reached out to all the children who in the next few weeks, beginning next weekend, would have been making their First Communion. In fact, 133 of you. So I'm really sad that we're not going to be able to celebrate it with you. But there are all sorts of ways in which we can allow our Lord to look after us during the time when we've still got to wait until you can actually make your First Communion. And uh, because those were the dates that were set in and you've got in your diaries, we're going to make a, a special feature of the First Communions uh, each of those Sundays. It won't just be about First Communion, it will be the parish masses, but we'll mention those of you who would have been making your First Communion by name and pray for you at those masses, so we look forward to that. Um, I also, for the children, all the children now, who, who are joining with your families, um, one of the things that Freddie Freckles started doing with his mum and dad was before he went to Mass, he started um, getting ready. And, and actually, he and his sister Susie was very good at this. She used to organise Freddie sometimes. But they actually used to have a look at the readings beforehand. Um, and so they knew what to look out for. So I'm just going to give you, tip you off a little bit today. In the first reading, we're back in those early days of the church. And, it, and it's worth noting that they were having their problems then, just as we do today. They were trying to organise things. In fact, um, it seemed that some of the people weren't getting enough food. It says there were complaints being made against the Hebrews by the Hellenists that the daily distribution uh, amongst their widows was being overlooked. Now, the apostles decided that this really was a practical problem that they didn't need to attend to themselves. And so that was why they settled down and they organised a group of men to organise it for them. And these were the first deacons. And I'm sure they had lots of other people working with them, just as we are today, to try and help one another with coronavirus and so on. OK, and then in the second reading... St. Peter talks about God's family being like a building with Jesus as the keystone in the corner. I mean, Freddy loved using his bricks and organising things and building things. Um, and during this time, he was having plenty of time to do all that. And he knew that if you just pulled one brick out of the corner, the whole building would fall down. And that's what St. Peter's saying to us. Christ is the cornerstone on which the whole building is built. And he talks to us about being living stones. <laughs> So the church is a living reality, of course, we're not a, a dead building, but we are sad that we can't come into our buildings to celebrate Mass at the moment. Anyway, enough regarding the readings for the time being. Those are the first two readings. Brother James will do them for us. And we'll begin now with our hymn, This Joyful Easter Tide. This joyful Easter Tide, away with sin and sorrow. My love, the crucified, has flung to life this morrow. Had Christ that once was slain, ne'er burst his three-day prison, our faith had been in vain. But now hath Christ arisen, 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 
Amazon. My flesh in hope shall rest and for a season slumber till trump from east to west shall wake the dead in number. Had Christ that once was slain ere burst his three-day prison, our faith had been in vain. But now hath Christ arisen, 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 arisen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. So there we are, Christ has risen. And that's quite a challenging hymn, that, isn't it? But uh, if you didn't know it, I hope you were bouncing around and joining in and humming and so on. So we're going to prepare to listen to the scriptures, see what our Lord wants to say to us today. And in the gospel, not only this weekend, but right up now until Pentecost, we're going to be listening to what Jesus was saying to the apostles at the Last Supper. And uh, again, those of you who've made your First Communion, you know what a big thing I make of that. That In St John's Gospel, there are five whole chapters about Jesus' conversation with the apostles. And today, well, we hear both Thomas and Philip questioning Jesus, not understanding quite what he's saying. And again, children, I want you to think about that. It's really important to be courageous enough to ask questions. You know, when I was a little boy, unlike you and Freddie Freckles, he's in the corner there, okay, we've got him here. Um, I don't know, I, I don't remember being encouraged to ask lots of questions. It seemed to me that the teachers did all the asking of questions and I had to know the answers, whether I understood the answers or not. And I think it's really important that we realise that even the apostles didn't always understand what Jesus was saying, and so they asked him to explain. Let's just pause for a moment and ask Jesus to help us to understand the day. And let's ask him to forgive us the times when we couldn't be bothered, or, or whatever, when we haven't done what we know we should have done, or, or just not bothered. Lord, we ask you to strengthen us for the gifts of your spirit, to heal the hurt of any sin in our lives, as we pray, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Again, we'll just sing the chorus of the Lord's Gloria, and next, next week we're going to do the clapping chorus. accomplish the Paschal, the Easter mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles. About this time, when the number of disciples was increasing, the Hellenists made a complaint against the Hebrews. 
In the daily distribution, their own widows were being overlooked. So the twelve called a full meeting of the disciples and addressed them. It would not be right for us to neglect the word of God so as to give out food. You, brothers, must select from among yourselves seven men of good reputation, filled with the Spirit and with wisdom. We will hand over this duty to them and continue to devote ourselves to prayer and to the service of the Word. The whole assembly approved of this proposal and elected Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, together with Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. The word of the Lord continued to spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem was greatly increased, and a large group of priests made their submission to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm, Alleluia. Alleluia. Ring out your joy to the Lord, O you just, for praise is fitting for loyal hearts. Give thanks to the Lord upon the harp. With a ten-stringed lute, sing him songs. Alleluia. For the word of the Lord is faithful, and all his works to be trusted. The Lord loves justice and right, and fills the earth with his love. Alleluia. The Lord looks on those who revere him, on those who hope in his love, to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine. Alleluia. The second reading is from the first letter of St. Peter. The Lord is the living stone rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious to him. Set yourselves close to him, so that you too, the holy priesthood that offers the spiritual sacrifices which Jesus Christ has made acceptable to God, may be living stones making a spiritual house. As scripture says, See how I lay in Zion a precious cornerstone that I have chosen and the man who rests his trust on it will not be disappointed. That means that for you who are believers, it is precious. But for unbelievers, the stone rejected by the builders has proved to be the keystone, a stone to stumble over, a rock to bring men down. They stumble over it because they do not believe in the word. It was the fate in store for them. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a consecrated nation, a people set apart to sing the praises of God, who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still, and trust in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. I am going now to prepare a place for you. And after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? 
Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you know me, you know my Father too. From this moment you know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, let us see the Father and then we shall be satisfied. Have I been with you all this time, Philip, said Jesus to him, and you still do not know me? To have seen me is to have seen the Father, so how can you say, let us see the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words I say to you I do not speak as from myself. It is the Father living in me who is doing this work. You must believe me when I say that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Believe it on the evidence of this work, if for no other reason. I tell you most solemnly, whoever believes in me will perform the same works as I do myself. He will perform even greater works, because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So there we are, if you were standing for the Gospel, time to sit down just for a few moments while we share a thought with you. Do you know, first of all, I want to say a word of thanks to our deacons. See, we hear how the first deacons in the very early days of the church were appointed to do lots of the practical things, and we're very blessed in our two parishes here, and indeed in the neighbouring parishes there are other deacons who have been helping out with funerals and so on recently because um, two of our deacons anyway are past that age um, and unfortunately Greg's also in a situation where uh, he's not free at the moment to, to be able to go out uh, and do those funerals. So we're very grateful to, to all the deacons who are working with us at the moment. But to Greg, our most newly ordained deacon, to Bernard down the road in St Mary's and to John who is the most remarkable deacon I think in the, the diocese, well anyway he's among them, uh, because he's well past retirement age and still going strong. So we're very grateful for all the wonderful work uh, you do in our parishes, out reaching out in a way that uh, the priests very often can't do. So that's, that's one terrific blessing that we have. Let me just share a thought with you today about what I said before we began the Mass, uh, remembering that in the Last Supper discourse, as we call it, that long conversation that Jesus had with the Apostles at the Last Supper, he was really concerned that they should understand that yes, he was going to have to leave them, he was actually going to be put to death, but then he was going to come back to them, he was going to rise again, he would send the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit would, as it were, charge them up with a whole new life and strength to do his work. And of course we're building up to that feast of Pentecost at the moment, we're in that period between Jesus rising on Easter Sunday and coming back and appearing to the Apostles, and the moment when he returned on Ascension Day, which will be the Thursday after next, uh, and then they waited for the Holy Spirit to come, the Holy Spirit came. But I always think it's fascinating when you listen to the conversation that the Apostles clearly were struggling to understand what Jesus was saying to them. And, and I guess that Thomas, who has a bit of a bad name, because not only did he question Jesus, as we know, at the Last Supper, but he also doubted uh, at the time of the resurrection whether Jesus really had risen so he, he's known as the doubting Thomas but I think Thomas did a great service by being courageous enough to say to Jesus I don't know what you're talking about can you explain a bit more as though Jesus did um, he said we don't know where you're going so how can we know the way and Jesus said I am the way have you not understood I'm showing you how you get to the Father and then Philip because he'd heard Jesus talking so much about the Father said just show us the Father then we'll be satisfied how often have we felt like that, about all sorts of things? Not just about our faith in our Lord, but perhaps all sorts of things. If only this would happen, if only that would happen, then I'd understand better. And sometimes what we have to do is really work at it. Yes, ask people who might be able to help us. If you're struggling with your homework children, for example, um, don't struggle on when you know there's help at hand. And if mum and dad don't know the answers, then these days, You've got that wonderful thing, the internet, where you can go in and find out almost anything you need to know. 
Uh, we didn't have that in my day, I'm afraid. We just had to get the books out and keep trying to find out how this happened, how that happened, and so on. But in the context of our faith, I think that conversation that we heard today is so crucially important. Because Jesus was saying that he is in the Father and the Father is in him. But then, what happens then? Jesus gives us himself, above all in this great gift of Holy Communion, of the Eucharist, so that we are then united with Jesus. He lives in us. We see how he lives in us. He actually feeds us. And then with Jesus, we become united to the Father. And he said he would send the Holy Spirit who would lead us to all truth. And so we believe that in our baptism to begin with, the Holy Spirit comes and Jesus becomes present and lives inside us. And then as we grow older, we are able to receive the sacrament of confirmation, confirming that gift of the Holy Spirit to make us stronger and to give us the wisdom and understanding that we need to be able to live our lives completely and fully the way God wants us to here on earth. So that's at the heart of this message. And of course, St. Peter, reflecting on this, as I suggested, that's why we had all the readings today, he is saying that we are like a living building, we are a living family, we're all like stones put together, we all have our part to play to make this family of the church uh, strong, so that it holds together, so that through Jesus, the cornerstone, we all remain united with one another. And that brings me back to the Holy Communion, because the Holy Communion is the great expression of that. Do this in memory of me. I am the bread of life, said Jesus. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And we're challenged with this real difficulty that today, those of you sharing in this Mass in your own homes are not able to receive Communion. And next week, 75 children who should have been receiving their First Communion here in our beautiful church of Bishop Eden at three different Masses, two on the Saturday and one on the Sunday, won't be able to make their first Holy Communion. So this is a real challenge to us. How do we understand this? When Jesus has told us this is what he wants us to do and we can't do it. Does that mean that Jesus has abandoned us? That he's not actually with us anymore? Well, no, it doesn't. And I'm got to, going to try and give you all the answers today and we're all going to have to struggle to try and understand this. But what I do want you to think about is this. Jesus also said to us, when two or three gather in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Now does that mean Jesus is not as fully present as he is when he actually gives us Holy Communion? Well, he can't do it. If Jesus is there, he's really there. The real presence of Jesus. In Holy Communion, it takes on a very special form, and I'm going to share some more thoughts about that in the weeks to come. But for today, I just want you to think about that. Even if you're by yourself, you're not really by yourself. You're united with all those who are joining in this Mass, both here in Liverpool and wherever you are. Um, Margie tells me people from all over the place are joining in this Mass, from other parts of the world, and you're all very welcome. And because you've joined us, you become part of our parish family, our, our two-parish family. But we're all united in the living Christ. He's present in your homes at the moment. The Church has moved into your homes. And even though you can't receive Holy Communion, know that Jesus is truly present with you as he is with me and with Brother James as we celebrate this Mass today. That's enough for today. We'll come back to this over the next few weeks as we celebrate our Parish Mass week by week. For now, we're going to make our act of faith together. And so for those of you who are going to stand, if you'd like to stand up, and we'll pray. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now let us bring our prayers of intercession through Jesus to God our Father. 
we begin by consciously uniting our prayer with the church all over the world today. We beg God to bless Pope Francis, our Archbishop Malcolm, our Redemptorist Bishop Ralph over there in Hallam, and all the bishops here in Britain particularly. We ask the Lord to bless all those who are trying to bring relief because of this awful virus at the moment. We think of the health workers, we think of those in the jobs which are making sure that we have our food and that everything that has to get done gets done. The people, as we say, in the front line, Lord, bless and strengthen them, give them courage. We pray for all those people who have especially asked our prayers and as you know, trying to make sure that we put all the intentions in here. I'm actually writing them on some rather lovely cards now, um, but many of you have sent little notes in and, and they're here, and the other ones I write up or type up. So I'm placing those under the altar, and remember this Mass is for all the people of the parish and all your intentions, um, but there are a few intentions that people have asked me to remember, and I hope um, these are the ones um, which I promised I, I, I would remember. There have been uh, a couple of anniversaries during this last week. I'd like you to remember again Father Barry O'Toole last Thursday. It's a year ago since Father Barry died, uh, and we all had a great affection for Barry, and he did a wonderful job in our two parishes for so many years. Um, I'd also like you to remember Eileen McQuillan. It, it was uh, her first anniversary just on Friday, and uh, Eileen, like so many of our parishioners, I got to know her really quite well and uh, it's always very sad and I remember the funeral and, and I, I just pray again that the family will feel comforted uh, in their faith at this time. Um, it's Eileen's son-in-law, um, John, his mother, I think it was just two years since she died in the same week, uh, Anne Bridson. So we remember those whose anniversaries occurred um, recently. Um, we had the two funerals last week of Colette Winifred Hart and Margaret Veronica Walker, so we pray eternal rest for them, and also for others who've died recently. Pat McColl phoned in and asked us to pray for a Father Hugh Sweeney uh, from his home parish in Donegal. Um, Andrew O'Connor told us about Neil Grayson, who's just died. Um, Alice Alka, the mother of Monsignor Stephen Alka, requests from Joanne Bibby that we remember Alice in our prayers. Um, and somebody else dropped a note in. I found the writing a little bit difficult to follow. I think it was from somebody called Lynn, and she said that her brother Norman had died, so we pray for Norman and the repose of his soul. And she also asked for prayers for a niece who is needing a serious brain uh, operation, brain surgery for a tumour, so we do remember all those prayers. And then among the sick, could I remind you of, of Anne Kelly in Bushy, um, of Jim Ledson, Kerry Harris. Um, Pat McCall told me that his brother John is out of hospital now. Remember Barbara Shannon. Um, Evelyn Ahern, who has come successfully through her operation. Bertha Farrelly, who unfortunately has um, had some infections during this last week, but we hope she's getting better. Please remember our own Father Martin Gay. He really is struggling a lot. He was in hospital this time last weekend. He's come back, um, but he's still really not very well. I'd like to remember Anne O'Neill's brother-in-law, Anthony. Anne O'Neill, our administrator at St Mary's. Um, he is very ill at the moment. Um, and then somebody wrote in and asked to pray for, she described as a younger son suffering from mental problems. And for all the intentions uh, that are close to your hearts, as I say, we gather them all, we place them on the altar today. Our Lord knows who all these people are. And we pray that he will unite us, the living, the dead, the sick, uh, as his great building, as his great family, and make us living stones, his body here on earth. We beg the prayers of Our Lady to, as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. And just as I was saying that prayer, I did remember then that uh, Leslie Williams, who we were praying for, who had the virus, he unfortunately has died during this past week. So again, uh, our condolences to Brenda 
um, and to his daughter Joanne. And also uh, we've been asked to organise the funeral of a Mary Tracy who died at Christopher Grange, so we remember them. I'll offer now the, the prayer of Pope Francis, begging the intercession of Our Lady too. You, salvation of your people, know what we need. We are certain that you will provide, so that as you did at Cana of Galilee, joy and feasting might return after this moment of trial. Dear Heavenly Mother, help us to live these difficult days filled with hope, with renewed unity, with a true spirit of obedience to what is required of us, with the certainty that after this trial we may arrive at the blessed and glorious hour of the resurrection. Amen. So once again, as I take the gifts of bread and wine, just uh, picture all your prayers placed on the pattern holds the host and in the chalice as I present them to God. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. My brothers and sisters, pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice, have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant we pray that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful, for his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, everyone, therefore, sorry, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. We'll offer the second Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, give praise to his name. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Malcolm, our Bishop, all the clergy and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you, through your Son, Jesus Christ. To him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. We prepare for Holy Communion best way we know, using the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. And I hope you're all in mind and heart offering each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Now before I actually receive Holy Communion, remember all the things I was saying earlier on. Jesus is indeed really present, here in the chalice and on my pattern, in the form of bread and wine, but no longer bread and wine. But Jesus is present wherever he chooses to be, and in whatever way he chooses to be. And today with you, I want to make this spiritual communion. If you have the leaflets, um, or you can get them down off the website, if you haven't already got them, um, 
will make it in the form that I prepared it for the children. Dear Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in Holy Communion. I love you and would love to receive you now, but since this is not possible, please come to me and fill me with all the blessings and graces I need to cope with everything that is going on. Unite us all and give us the peace which you promised only you can give. Amen. And now we'll have those quiet moments of prayer, asking our Lord to fill us with his life and his love. And then we offer after I've received communion uh, the final prayers of the Mass. So let's sing those lovely words, Jesus, I love you, you are my Lord. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. You are my Lord. Jesus, I thank you. Jesus, I thank you. Jesus, I thank you. Jesus, I thank you. You are my Lord. I meant to point out the, the Paschal candle at the beginning of Mass, as I did on Thursday. Some of you, I'm sure, have noticed, if you didn't hear what I said on Thursday, that uh, it's different. Well, this is the Bishop Eden Paschal candle. Last few, three weeks and a half, we've had the St. Mary's Paschal candle. And we just thought, gosh, we're going to burn the St. Mary's Paschal candle down, um, and by the time we get back into the church, they'll hardly have a Paschal candle left. So for the rest of Easter time, because we light it every day when we celebrate Mass here as a community, we thought we'll use the Bishop Eaton one up until Pentecost, and then both of them will be well ready for when our church is open again. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, can I just encourage you um, to get on the, the websites and have a look at the parish bulletins and all the messages that are going up. Um, there's lots of information there, and people are discovering new things and new ways of keeping in touch. And, oh, it's, it's, it gets more and more interesting and exciting in a way, the way we're trying to keep the whole thing together. Remember, this, this uh, way of looking after one another uh, is opening up all sorts of new possibilities. So David Delaney is still doing his reflections, and um, uh, people have been... Well, one important suggestion, I don't want to forget, Tim Walsh, uh, who's on the Finance Committee here at Bishop Eaton, he uh, is very much, as, as I think those of you here know, involved with CAFOD, and so he is highlighting the fact that there is huge concern across the world about the developing countries, um, that they are going to face possibly a terrible crisis, which is almost unimaginable uh, with this virus. We've already touched on the fact that Zimbabwe is having difficulties, and some of you have been able to help there. So please do check that out. CAFOD are making a special appeal to try and be as prepared as they can. We realise what happens if we're not as fully prepared as perhaps we could or should be, um, how easily this virus can become an even greater problem. So I do share that with you. I also thank Tim and his team and our team down at St Mary's for all the work they've done 
are trying to make sure that the parish finances are okay. I think we've just about sorted things out now, and we are encouraging you um, not to drop in envelopes and things anymore uh, into the monastery or into St Mary's, um, but just, if you can, hang on to them, and eventually um, we'll gather them all together and get it all sorted later. So thanks for all, for all that. Um, I hope I've remembered everything I intended to, to share with you, but if I didn't, uh, well, I'll try and remember it at the Thursday message next week. But again, I want to thank you for all the encouragement and thank Brother James for all his support. I know he's become a special friend of my sister's now on Facebook. She sent me a, a message to say that they'd been in touch after I mentioned uh, the fact that he was putting out those, those uh, lovely reflections of hymns, again, to try and support people during this time. So there's so much going on. Um, and as I say, if you've got time, have a good look uh, at the newsletters and at the websites and all the links that they're offering us. Have a good week as far as you can, and please, God, we'll keep in our prayers, especially those who are suffering, and I realise for some of you it must be a, a real struggle at the moment. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace, glorifying the Lord with your lives. Thanks be to God. And shall we just sing the, the last verse of that challenging hymn before we finish today? Earth's flood hath lost its chill since Jesus crossed the river. Lover of souls from ill, my passing soul deliver. Had Christ that once was slain there burst his three day prison, our faith had been in vain. But now hath Christ arisen, arisen, arisen.